Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul and in this short game to come video, I've got a question for you. Can an i7-4770K provide enough CPU power to run one of these? An RTX 2080 Ti. This is a Gigabyte model. This is not sponsored or anything like that. This is actually a card that we bought from our own money. But there are so many questions right now uh, going around with these cards, like if you have a Ryzen CPU, how much will you be CPU bound? And if you have, let's say, a KB Lake processor, then you get the idea. So I decided to take an i7-4770K and run it with hyperthreading enabled as well as disabled. So a little bit about this PC then. It's actually an older workhorse system that I've been running since the CPU came out in like 2011 or whenever it was. But I've actually done a small overclock to this. It's running at 4.4 gigahertz. The memory, which of course is a DDR3, a DDR3, excuse me, is running at 2200 megahertz and so on. Uh, we actually put out another video using this same system just before I went to Seattle, which was just over a month ago, uh, with the system running a GTX 1080, just to show that this process still has an awful lot of legs left in it, particularly if you overclock it and run the RAM at a decent clock speed. So then, with all of the questions with CPU bound and just how much oomph you need to run one of these cards, I decided to do the next logical thing, because I'm rebuilding systems right now and, well, the RTX 2080 Ti was kind of sitting there on the shelf and I was like, hmm, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm curious, kind of curious. And then I ran into problem one. <laughs> um, the PC promptly died the moment I ran any load for it because the power supply just wasn't quite as good as I'd hoped. And therefore, I'd like to also thank uh, BitPhoenix for providing this PSU, which is a 750 watt. It's a Formula Gold. Uh, there'll be a review of this coming up soon as well. This is not a sponsored video, once again, by these guys, but they did send over the review sample and it just so happened to work beautifully in terms of timing. So I want to give them a quick shout out because without that, the PC would just be kind of, well, really great at showing the desktop with the RTX 2080 Ti, but not so much with the system running with the RTX 2080 Ti. So uh, with that said, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, show some games. Uh, I'm going to be running at both 1440p as well as, of course, 4K. Uh, this is a 4K TV. And then we're going to go into some graphs and then we're going to discuss whether we're CPU bound and how that works. So without further ado, let's try it. All right. So first up is Rise of the Tomb Raider. Uh, as you can see, I have Rival Tuna Statistics in the top left corner and we're running with the high settings i'll get into why in just a moment at uh, 4k and once again the high preset so why have i chosen high well it'll become more clear or come clearer when we switch to 1440p but for now uh i'm kind of at the start of a small spoilery-ish section but it's not going to be any major spoilers for you all so uh you should be good so uh, we're in a fairly enclosed area at the moment, but you can see CPU usage total is around the low 30 mark, which is not terribly high. Once again, we are at, uh, at uh, 4K here, and whether you enable um, survival instincts or not, it doesn't really matter. The CPU usage is, you know, 30-40% at most. And you can see that the uh, GPU is uh, boosting to around what you would expect. I just need to quickly heal as well. There we go. And yeah, so we're in the 70 FPS mark and the GPU usage is 100%. You can quite clearly see that at the top, uh, the very top, uh, all the way up there. And yeah, so we're getting to a more open area and yeah, CPU is still not the issue here. We're in fact, we're not really noticing any major dips. So it's still primarily GPU, which is holding us back. And once again, I'd like to point out that we are at the high settings. We are not at the highest settings possible. And this is even more abundantly clear uh, when we switch to 1440p. And immediately, of course, the frame rate jumps up. But I'd also like you to focus on GPU usage. Uh, once again, it's pegged at almost 100%. But the CPU usage, not so much. It's, uh, yeah, only around 60%. So clearly, the CPU is doing a lot more work here. 
but not to the point. Uh, I'm not trying to really progress too far in the story because obviously I don't want to spoil anything for those who haven't played this. But even running around, and this is the same in different areas of the game, uh, with the uh, high preset and obviously with an RTX 2080 Ti, if you're running a 1440p monitor with this type of uh, GPU, you would probably want to push this a lot higher than uh, high. Yeah, uh, CPU is not the bottleneck here. The GPU is still the limiting factor. Right, now we're going to start Doom 2016. Uh, once again, with hyperthreading enabled, uh, the resolution is at 4K. I'll switch in a moment to uh, 1440p. Field of view is 110, and under advanced options, well, yeah, you can see that we are basically all maxed out there. Uh, so this is pretty much going to be punishing the uh, GPU as much as you can possibly do with uh, Doom, unless we were to really start doing downsampling and stuff. I'm going Kadir Sanctum. You have to excuse the really screwed up way that I'm leaning over, but I cannot play on a joypad for this game, and it's been ages since I've played this game anyway with any level of competence, so it's going to be uh, interesting. I'm not uh, aiming to do anything specifically well here, I'm just aiming to cause as much destruction as possible, so you can see what happens to the frame rates. But, uh, yeah, once again, the GPU is just not the limiting factor. Uh, sorry, the CPU is not the limiting factor. We are, uh, for all intents and purposes, barely touching the 50% mark. Oh, hello there, little fella. Don't mind if I just rocket you constantly, do you? Oh, you do? Not too bad. Uh, your AI is not that great, is it? He's like, you know, hopping around trying to catch me. <laughs> uh, anyway, so let's see if uh, some blood and guts. No, not really. Blood and guts not so much making the difference. And we're hitting over 100 frames a second consistently, despite the fact that we are running at 4K. And CPU bound is not even slightly uh, the issue. Let's have some double shotgun. Okay, because so I'm playing with no sound, it's making actually playing rather interesting for me. All right, now uh, we're at around the 60% mark for the CPU. That seems to be about as high as it's actually jumped thus far. Let's switch to 1440p. Yes, we will keep those display settings. And what do you know, CPU usage has jumped up to the low 80s at worst. Uh, this is not the most intense level in the game, but it's certainly not exactly a walk in the park. There are far more uh, claustrophobic areas where CPU is even less of an issue um, and yeah once again despite no what I'm doing let's just have a quick look around actually and kind of spin on the spot so I think that'll be a kind of a nice test you know what I just I just want to punch you a little bit it's okay lots of particle effects there over 180 ish frames a second and I don't think we've got too much of a problem with the frame rate. So Doom, if you are maxing it out on a uh, 1440p monitor with an RTX 2080 Ti, you're not going to have a problem with a, even an older i7. Uh, it just, yeah, you're still going to be CPU bound. Uh, sorry, GPU bound. Even explosions right next to you don't seem to make the difference. Right, so back into Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This time, hyperthreading is disabled, and we're still running the same settings, so we'll just run through them just to double check. Yep, 1440p with high, so this is the preset of high. And so how do we do? Well, CPU is definitely more the limiting factor. Uh, we are in quite a enclosed area, and we're still hitting the 80% mark, 90% mark for CPU, but it's still not awful, right? I mean, yep, we're 100% bound here, but the frame rate is pretty darn good. Uh, my, my processor here is overclocked to uh, 4.4 gigahertz, if memory, uh, if memory serves. And this is, once again, I just, I know I keep saying this, but only the high preset, which means that if anything, we're doing the GPU a favor. We're actually putting less work on the GPU. Um, so, in fact, if we were to start playing around with that and go into uh, display and graphics and we were to go to, let's say, resolution and crank that up to 4K, uh, and then we would quickly press yes, how does the CPU look? Well, look at that. Back once again to the 50% mark utilization, 50, 60%. It's not bad. I mean, this is certainly 
leaving the CPU with some uh, some grunt left over. Now, bear in mind, this is with no Chrome open, this is with no Discord open, this is with no uh, processes running in the background. So this is essentially the best scenario possible for the game. But even so, if we were to say, well, um, you were to buy an RTX 2080 Ti, and you were to have, let's say, an i5-7600K, particularly if you were 6600K, and you were to overclock those to, let's say, the 5 gigahertz mark with a good amount of RAM, in the short term, uh, this is a very viable strategy. This is a very viable option to play. Um, I mean, look at... We've got a nice draw distance. Oh, shit, that was not good. Uh, we've got... A nice draw distances. I was trying to look to left as I was swinging, which wasn't the best of options. Uh, but yeah, I mean, excellent draw distance. So it's not like the CPU is not getting a workout here. And if we were to go back into options and crank the resolution even higher, so we were to go to highest, which means it basically applies it automatically. Well, yeah, now we're, well, pretty much completely uh, GPU bound. Uh, CPU is not really the problem as whatsoever. Okay, so now let's take a look at some benchmarks. And as we go through different games like Shadow of the Tomb Raider and uh, different benchmarks such as Superposition, it's pretty remarkable how well the i7-4770K actually does. Even with hyper-threading disabled, it's not like the processor is completely and utterly incapable of running games. At 4K, in fact, the results are much closer. However, there are a couple of reasons that, without question, the 4770K is getting a bit of a hand. The first is that we have better airflow with my particular case, which means that GPU boost clocks are higher. The second is that there are fewer security updates that I've enabled on my system. This means, of course, Spectre and Meltdown are taking less of a toll. The third, and another pretty obvious one, is I'm overclocking my PC, which does help. Uh, the 7700 is not overclocked, it is uh, stock. So obviously you are counting an, an overclocked uh, Haswell processor against a stock KB Lake system. So when you take all of those factors in, combined with newer drivers that we're running on the RTX 2080 Ti, then without question the 2080 Ti on the 4770K is of course running with a few additional bells and whistles. But even despite that, as we go through these graphs, it's really remarkable how well an Haswell processor stacks up against today. So what conclusions can we draw here? Am I telling you right now to purchase an RTX 2080 Ti and do not worry about your CPU? Keep your i5-4670K? No, of course not. Ultimately, there needs to be some balance and spending 1100 bucks on a PC which is several years old may not be the best uh, thing to do. But what it does do is show that CPU bound is almost certainly not going to be the issue unless there are some specific circumstances. If you are playing, let's say, a uh, high stakes Counter Strike and you need the absolute highest frame rates possible, then obviously a really high end CPU is undoubtedly going to help you get towards the 240 hertz mark. But for the average person who is most likely going to be maxing out the GPU, playing games like Shadow of the Tomb Raider, playing games like The Witcher, the new Resident Evil games like Resident Evil 2, you get where I'm going with this. Almost certainly GPU is going to be the thing that eats up most of your budget because it's going to be the thing that is often a limiting factor. So if you do have, let's say, a 4770K and you're waiting for a new Intel HEDT system, the 9000 series, and right now you are just thinking, well, I want to buy a new graphics card because my GPU is kind of long in the tooth. Maybe it's BSOD, whatever. And you just want to play around with something new. You can certainly go out and buy it and not feel that you are going to be hampering your system significantly. With that said, um, it also lends itself well to debates of should you spend the extra cash on, let's say, a 9900K or just save the cash and either put it towards the GPU or just pocket the money and go with something like a 2700X or a 9700K instead. And if you're gaming, it's quite clear that CPU is almost certainly not going to be the limiting factor. I'm saying that now, uh, at the tail end of 2018, when the next generation consoles launch, the PlayStation 5 and the new uh, Xbox, who knows what's really going to happen. But for now at least, if you have a Haswell processor or similar, 
And you can certainly buy a GTX 1080, a GTX 1080 Ti even, especially if you get one really cheap off eBay or an RTX 2080 or an RTX 2070 or a Vega 64 and not feel that you are totally and utterly bottlenecking your new purchase. And besides, we've had some fun along the way, right? With all of that said, hopefully you have enjoyed the video. If you have, you can like, share, comment, and subscribe. We're on uh, Patreon, which you can find linked in the video description, along with a couple of Amazon affiliate links. So if you do feel like buying something new and shiny for your PC or just a new toaster oven, well, you can use those to help support the channel. It doesn't cost you anything, but it does give us a few pennies, which of course is greatly appreciated. But I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.